Hey guys, this is Richard at Reefs.com, and we're on the show floor of Reef of Palooza, California 2024, and I'm here with my good buddy, Chad Clayton of Reef Nutrition. Chad, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. It's good to see you. Likewise. Yeah. First of all, yeah. thank you so much for having me here. How's the show for you so far? Oh, the show's been great, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. yesterday was just a steady stream of people. Yeah. All the aisles were pretty well full. We sold a bunch of product, and um, yeah, it was just great to meet hobbyists at events like these. For sure. Yeah. You know, I've been meaning to get with you because, you know, like, you guys offer so many different products, and you guys actually make a lot of the products in-house. And then, you know, I was talking to many different facilities, and term biosecurity comes up very, very often. Now, can you tell me a little bit about biosecurity in your office? and? How is that important for you guys? Yeah, biosecurity is one of the most import important parts of what we do. Basically, for those that don't know what that means, it's essentially securing the biological aspect of what we do and protecting it mm -hmm. from contamination and from disease yeah. and things like that. And so we basically take our, our education on this mm -hmm. from aquaculture. Okay. Uh, biosecurity is very strict in shrimp farming, right, right. fish farming. Yeah. They have things called critical control points where you wash your hands, you wash your shoes, and then you get to enter you know, those areas, things like that. Shrimp farming, actually, some of the farms have different colored shirts or uniforms. Yeah. And you're only allowed to, you know, if you're wearing orange, you're only allowed in the orange areas and, and so on, so yeah. that you do not transfer disease from like the larvae to the adults or, or, or vice versa. Right, and right. And so we uh, employ a lot of those similar techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, we teach our employees about vectors of contamination. So right. how do we get disease into our facility and contaminants? Mm -hmm. We identify them as like the ocean, a lake, somebody going fishing, somebody going to a public aquarium or putting their hands in their own aquarium and then right. coming to our farm. Right. Um, you know, we identify those as problems. Right. Uh, and so those are ways that we could, you know, eliminate contamination. Same with animals. We don't allow dogs at our farm because uh, dogs can roam around and poke their nose in things and, and transfer things to our our animals and our phytoplankton um, ponds. So. so you're just talking about phytoplankton. <laughs> like if what what can happen if it gets contaminated and what how would you define contamination in phytos? Right, so with phytoplankton, the, the biggest contamination threat that we have is one phytoplankton species contaminating another. Okay. Um, so it's nothing like you know worms or other uh, organisms that are not phytoplankton getting into our cultures. Yeah. Uh, we take great steps to make sure that doesn't happen. But, but uh, contaminating with algae from one pond to another is, is something we, we try to, to, um, to avoid. And, and right. we do have... Um, a, a very robust water quality water filtration system. Right. Uh, we basically made our own water filtration system uh, using ozone. Uh, we use um, protein skimming. Mm -hmm. We pasteurize, pasteurize the water, yeah. heat it up um, yeah. really hot, and so killing all bacteria and anything that can potentially enter the cultures right. um, and cause us problems. Uh, and, and if we do have a culture that's contaminated, we, we break it down immediately. And then we started over brand new. So everything gets thrown out, thrown, thrown away. Yeah, everything gets bleached uh -huh. and dis and then dechlorinated, and then the water goes right back into our system, uh, and we start a new pond, wow. basically, gotcha, with gotcha. clean, filtered salt water. Gotcha. We make our own salt water too. So that's, right, right. That's awesome. There's yeah. another way to avoid um, you know, any contamination from the oil. In. Right, yeah. right. Even I mean, there's if, even if you like ozone everything and filter like crazy, I mean, there's still that minute chance of things slipping through right yeah and, and that's another thing we take very seriously is we get we get ingredients from mm -hmm. other sources yeah so like the roe and the arctopods the beta brine those come from other sources mm -hmm. they're sent to us frozen and what we did was we we identified those as potential sources of contamination and we decided let's let's put all, all this production of these products into a completely separate building right, that's separate right. from our growing areas yeah. from the actual farm itself. Yeah. Have staff that is trained to work in that area, yeah. bottle everything up, put it in the cooler, and then they're done for the day, they go home. Yeah, and we train our employees to just be aware of these things. Awareness is like big part of the, the biggest part of it mm -hmm. because there's only so much you can do. Like you said, there's airborne stuff, yeah. birds can bring things in. I mean, we are in a rural area with a, with, with farm and greenhouses, right. and so we can we can get insects and birds, and they can potentially bring things in. Right. But um, we do have closed systems, yeah. so they can't just you know come into the greenhouse and poop on a pond. You know the ponds are all enclosed, right, um, and protected from that kind of thing. Gotcha. You know, and, and I was wondering because you guys do also pod, and you, since you do a lot of pods yourself, 
Are you, I mean, is, is pod people separated from the algae people and vice versa? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So our rotifer, our live rotifer culture area is separate from the algae. Mm -hmm. um, the copepod growing area is also a completely different building uh, detached from our greenhouses. Uh, and, and one other thing I might add is that we don't work with fish. We don't import fish. Right. We don't breed fish. Right. And so there's really no worry for customers buying our stuff that there's going to be some fish pathogen mm -hmm. that, you know, is coming from our, our products. Yeah. Um, you know, like a parasite, anything right. like that. So, so that's another thing that, you know, we're, we're very pleased that we don't have to deal with. Right, and we right. We don't have to go to extra steps to, to prevent contamination from sources like that. Gotcha. Um, so ensuring this biosecurity goes through, through all the proper channels and extent, all the way down to the end users, how do you guys train the stores and other consumer, uh, customers that buy from you? Right, so essentially we let them know that we do have a biosecurity plan mm -hmm. um, and that we do we offer training for our employees. So yeah. any new employee automatically gets the biosecurity training. Okay. And then we do refresher courses as we expand and work with new, you know, maybe species of algae and things like that. Gotcha. Um, and so we do pass that information on to some of our customers uh -huh. that are interested in it. For example, Australia. Yeah. It has very strict biosecurity protocols. Oh yeah, protocols. so strict. And they don't allow much in there unless it's been tested for pathogens and things are not alive. So we sell a lot of our dead, frozen, non-viable phytoplankton to Australia and yeah. we have to have it tested yeah. and proven with a certificate and that certificate goes with every single batch right. so that when it goes into their country, goes through customs, they see that right. and they sign off on it and it moves on to the customer. Didn't you say that before that they had to be like gamma rate on everything? There are some places that will gamma irradiate, yeah, the wow. foods. It's like, um, it sounds like a middle of a Marvel movie, like a Hulk, you know? <laughs> Copa put into some, some villain or something, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right yeah, Amazing exactly. adventure of a Copa, Copa god. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah and... Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, with, like I mentioned, our stuff is, our, our algae is frozen, most yeah. of it, or refrigerated, mm -hmm. and we're rendering the cells non-viable, so right. we're also, nothing else is alive in the, in the mixture, right. especially when you freeze it, things yeah. die. And so if there's anything that slipped through that we didn't catch, mm -hmm. all the way to the bagging, you know, of where we put it in a bag, seal it, and label it, yeah. um, the, the, fr the freezing will, will take care of that. Uh, okay. But we do, I mean, recently we set up all kinds of filters on our algae outflows. Yeah. Um, we have quality control where we look at samples from every single pond to make yeah. sure there's nothing weird showing up in our, right. in our cultures. I do it with the copepods, our rotifer guy does it with the rotifers. So we're constantly on top of these things because we want the cultures to be happy and healthy. Right. And of course we want to sell something that isn't contaminated. Of course. And so it benefits all of us right, when, right, when right. we do this. Gotcha, man. You know, honestly, I knew there was a lot of work behind it because, like, you know, like when I go to public aquariums or aquaculture facility, before you touch any tanks, we have to wipe down with alcohol and et cetera, and then we have to, like, you can't use a net from here to there, like, it's designated, like, things for each system. So I knew that you guys had something in, in, in the process, but I didn't, I didn't know it was this in depth. Yeah. You had a great, actually, great speech at RAP Orlando, I think, last year, in regards to it. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, Chad, thank you so much for having me and explaining your security protocols. I think this is such an important topic that's often overlooked because, you know, it's not a sexy topic, you know, like, uh, like you know, for us, you know, usually there's corals and, you know, everything is just, we just expect it, you know? But thing is that you guys, I really appreciate the fact that you guys take so much effort and have so many protocols in place, not only protect you guys, but protect us end users. Yep. And Chad, once again, thank you so much for having us. And I look forward to seeing you again in another trade show and more innovations from you from down the road. Right on, Richard. Thanks. All right, man.